Washington, D.C. Welcome to the 2020 Republican National Convention. Tonight, celebrating America as the land of promise. Let us pray, and pray we must, as grateful citizens of a country we boldly claim to be one nation under God. Pray we must, praising the Lord for a country where freedom of religion is so cherished, where, where both Republicans and Democrats begin their conventions, heads bowed in prayer. Pray we must, conscious of those suffering from COVID and those unwearied frontliners who care for them and all of us. Pray we must that all lives may be protected and respected in our troubled cities and the police who guard them, in tense world situations where our men and women in uniform keep the peace, for the innocent life of the baby in the womb, for our elders in nursing care and hospice, for our immigrants and refugees, those lives threatened by religious persecution throughout the world or by plague, hunger, drugs, human trafficking, or war. Pray we must in thanksgiving, in thanksgiving, dear God, for democracy, as we ask your hand, Almighty Father, upon this convention and the nominees of both parties and his wisdom upon an electorate so eager to perform its duty of faithful citizenship. Pray we do, for we dare claim, in God we trust, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. It is an honor to be with you tonight. My name is Charlie Kirk. I run the largest pro-American student organization in the country, Turning Point USA, fighting for the future of our republic. Speaking to you in my personal capacity tonight as a 26-year-old, I see the angst of young people as well as the challenges facing new parents. I am here tonight to tell you, to warn you, that this election is a decision between preserving America as we know it and eliminating everything that we love. For decades, ruling class leaders in both parties sold out our future to China, to faceless corporations, and to self-serving lobbyists. They did it to preserve their own power and enrich themselves, all while rigging the system to hold down the good, decent middle-class patriots striving to build a family and pursue a decent life. All of this changed dramatically in 2015, when a billionaire named Donald Trump put his own life of luxury on the line. From that moment he came down that famous escalator, he started a movement to reclaim our government from the rotten cartel of insiders that have been destroying our country. We may not have realized it at the time, but Trump is the bodyguard of Western civilization. Trump was elected to protect our families from the vengeful mob that seeks to destroy our way of life, our neighborhoods, schools, churches, and values. President Trump was elected to defend the American way of life. The American way of life means you follow the law, you work hard, you honor God, you raise your kids with strong values, and you work to create a civil society. The American way of life means you speak your mind without retribution, without being kicked off social media by a self-righteous censor in Silicon Valley. It means you can freely practice your religion and that church is more essential than a casino. And it means that we judge people on their actions, not on their immutable characteristics. 
The American way of life is being dismantled by a group of bitter, deceitful, vengeful activists who have never built anything in their lives. They have us locking up pastors while releasing violent criminals from prison. We are kicking doctors off of social media, yet promoting Chinese state-funded propaganda on major tech platforms. This election is the most critical since 1860, when a man named Lincoln was elected to preserve the Union from disintegration. This election is not just the most important of our lifetime, it is the most important since the preservation of the Republic in 1865. By re-electing Trump, we will ensure that our kids are raised to love our country and respect its founding fathers, not taught to hate or be ashamed of them. We will build monuments to heroes, not burn down our cities. We will be a country that rises to higher heights, that dreams big, thinks big, and achieves the impossible. A country that values our remarkable journey, the complexities of our past, but clearly communicates to the next generation that we have to be grateful, not angry, that we live in the United States. We will be a country that makes it easier to have many children, live quiet and peaceable lives, and worship your God without a tyrant getting in the way. We will be a country that has its best 100 years ahead. We will build a future where America remains the greatest country ever to exist in the history of the world. All of that is within our grasp if we secure four more years for the defender of Western civilization, our champion, my friend, the 45th president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. I'm Rebecca Friedrichs a veteran California public school educator. I'm here to give voice to America's great teachers because our voices have been silenced for decades by unions who claim to represent us. They do not. When other dedicated teachers and I served within the unions, we spoke up in defense of children, parents, scientific fact, and American values. For our trouble, we were brutalized booed off the platform, barred from committees, shouted down, and even spit upon by union leaders. This is how unions treat devoted teachers. But what's even worse is how their agenda of control deceives Americans and our children. They've intentionally rewritten American history to perpetuate division, pervert the memories of our American founders, and disparage our Judeo-Christian virtues. Their lenient discipline policies morphed our schools into war zones, and they back defunding police and abolishing ICE. Unions collect billions annually from unsuspecting teachers and push this radical agenda into our classrooms against our will. Why? The only way to keep a free republic is with a well-educated, moral citizenry that can self-govern. Unions are subverting our republic, so they undermine educational excellence, morality, law, and order. That's why they spend hundreds of millions annually to defeat charter schools and school choice, trapping so many precious low-income children in dangerous, corrupt and low-performing schools. To fight back on behalf of children and America, brave teachers brought a lawsuit against unions. And do you know who intervened against us? The Obama-Biden administration and California Attorney General Kamala Harris. They argued against us at the U.S. Supreme Court. Their comrades labeled us spawns of Satan and slandered us in mainstream media. No matter their abuse, we'll keep fighting for the country and children we love, just like President Trump. He's breaking the union's grip on our schools. That's why unions have tried to destroy him since the day he was elected. But President Trump isn't afraid to fight for what's right. He won't back down. His courage gives great teachers renewed hope. 
He's even proposed education freedom scholarships to return control to parents, protect religious liberties, and empower kids to escape dangerous, low-performing schools. The Republican platform supports educational freedom. The Democrat Party does not. Democrats stand with deceptive teachers unions who pick on loving teachers and little kids. President Trump stands with America's families, great teachers, and most importantly, our children. So America's great teachers, let's stand with President Trump in protection of the kids and country we love. grateful to speak with you today. My name is Tanya Weinrice. I am from Montana where I live with my husband, my hero, a Marine and retired police officer. My husband and I own Mountain Mud Espresso. We are not some multinational corporation. Our success is not measured by stockholders, but by our neighbors, the people we see at church and at jujitsu school with our son. Mountain Mud Espresso is the American story, a story not just for entrepreneurs, but for millions of hardworking men and women who are building their American dream every day. A few months ago, like so many businesses, we got the crushing news, a large event we were serving was canceled because of the virus. Our business was on the brink, threatened to be shut down from losses that were not our fault. I was scared. I thought of our 50 employees, the Mountain Mud family, and when I thought of their jobs, I thought of their rent being due, their kids, and I felt personally responsible. I'm not too proud to admit that I fell on my knees and prayed, Lord, what do I do? His words rang clear, keep on working, it will be okay. I had faith, and let me tell you, you have to have faith when your husband is a Marine and a police officer who was shot at on the job. And when you run a business, a little faith goes a long way. Faith in Jesus and faith in America. But I'm worried we have a generation of Americans who have been told that the American dream doesn't exist. That's a lie. I know because I live that dream. It's why I feel so strongly that we need a president who believes in the American dream like President Donald Trump, now more than ever. I am so thankful that my prayers for help were answered. My company was one of the first to receive a PPP loan, and praise God, it has been a lifesaver. Not only were we able to keep every single employee, but we've been hiring weekly ever since. I feel for local businesses across America who are under assault from shutdowns, from riots, and now facing the terrifying prospect of Joe Biden coming after everything we've built. I am so grateful we have leaders like President Trump standing up for local businesses like mine. Thank you, President Trump. It is exciting to be part of the great American comeback story. I'm Congressman Matt Gates. I'm speaking to you from an auditorium emptier than Joe Biden's daily schedule. But we are a nation of full hearts and clear minds. We see the choice clearly, strength or weakness, energy or confusion, success or failure. President Trump is the first president since Reagan not to start a new war. Biden has foolishly cheerled decades of war without winning, without end. President Trump knows we are strongest when we fight hardest, not in distant deserts, but for our fellow Americans. We must fight to save America now, or we may lose her forever. Joe Biden might not even notice. Settle for Biden. That's the hashtag promoted by AOC and the socialists. The Woketopians will settle for Biden because they will make him an extra in a movie written, produced, and directed by others. It's a horror film, really. They'll disarm you, empty the prisons, lock you in your home, and invite MS-13 to live next door. 
and the police aren't coming when you call in Democrat-run cities. They're already being defunded, disbanded. Blaming our best and allowing society's worst? That's the story they write in Hollywood. That's if the lights even stay on in California anymore. A state that cannot keep power running for its own people should not send its junior senator to be vice president. They used to write only in fiction, but nightmares are becoming real. Cops killed, children shot. At the Democrat convention, they say, if you vote against Trump, it will all stop. Appeasement is never a winning strategy. No, we won't settle for violence in our neighborhoods or at our border. We won't settle for decades of bad decisions by basement-dwelling Joe Biden. We settle a continent. We know that the frontier, the horizon, even the stars belong to us. Donald Trump, like all builders, is a visionary. That which is built in the mind is even more powerful than the brick and mortar that holds it together. First comes the mind, then the making. First comes the vision than the work. Washington, Lincoln, and Jefferson are immortal precisely because of the pull they have on our imagination. You cannot cancel a culture that loves its heroes. The dangerous left need America to be weaker to accomplish their goal of replacing her. We know that to make America great again, we must first make something of ourselves. That is the meaning of true strength. My great-grandfather was a railroad man. As a Florida man, I watch our rockets routinely send the brightest beyond the heavens with our flag and our hope. America is the greatest country that has ever existed. Don't let any celebrity, athlete, or politician tell you otherwise. President Trump sometimes raises his voice and a ruckus. He knows that's what it takes to raise an army of patriots who love America and will protect her. We must win this election if we cherish our country as much as we should. For there is no place to run, no refuge for freedom should we fail. America is not just an idea or a constitution. It is our home. We must protect our home with unbreakable made in America strength. Strength I see every day in President Donald Trump. Thank you. My name is Kim Klasik and I'm running for Congress in Maryland 7th District. And like Shirley Chisholm, I'm unbought and unbossed. Let me remind you, the Democrats have controlled this part of Baltimore City for over 50 years, and they have run this beautiful place right into the ground. Abandoned buildings, liquor stores on every corner, drug addicts, guns on the street, that's now the norm in many neighborhoods. You'd think Maryland taxpayers would be getting a whole lot since our taxes are out of control. Instead, we're paying for decades of incompetence and corruption. Sadly, the same cycle of decay exists in many of America's Democrat-run cities. And yet the Democrats still assume that black people will vote for them, no matter how much they let us down and take us for granted. We're sick of it. We're not gonna take it anymore. The days of blindly supporting the Democrats are coming to an end. In Baltimore, we have the highest number of black Republicans in the entire country running for office this election cycle. Joe Biden believes we can't think for ourselves, that the color of someone's skin dictates their political views. We're not buying the lies anymore. You and your party have neglected us for far too long. We want safety in our neighborhoods. We want to make the most of the federal opportunity zone I'm standing in right now in West Baltimore. We want higher paying jobs and more business opportunities. We want lower taxes. We want school choice. We want a chance to get ahead, not just get by. That's what President Trump promised and that's what President Trump delivered. I want Baltimore to be an example to Republicans around the country that we can compete in our inner cities if we reach out to the citizens and deliver real results. President Trump is bringing this country back roaring. He's bringing the American spirit to life for all Americans. So I'm asking you to help President Trump complete this great American comeback. And then I'm asking you to help me start this great Baltimore comeback. Thank you, and God bless America. Good evening. I'm Ronna McDaniel, Chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. And on behalf of everyone in our party and President Trump, thank you for tuning in as we kick off this historic convention. 
As we speak to you tonight, we send our thoughts and prayers to those facing terrible fires in California, recovering from storms in Iowa, and preparing for hurricanes in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. Democrats started their convention last week with Eva Longoria, a famous Hollywood actress who played a housewife on TV. Well, I'm actually a real housewife and a mom from Michigan with two wonderful kids in public school who happens to be the only, only the second woman in 164 years to run the Republican Party. And unlike Joe Biden, President Trump didn't choose me because I'm a woman. He chose me because I was the best person for the job. Four years ago, President Trump started a movement unlike any other. And over the next four days, we will hear from a few of the millions of hardworking, everyday Americans who have benefited from his leadership. If you watched the DNC last week, you probably noticed that Democrats spent a lot of time talking about how much they despise our president. But we heard very little about their actual policies. Policies that would have been unthinkable a decade ago. Policies like banning fossil fuels, eliminating private health insurance, taxpayer-funded health care for people who come here illegally, and defunding the police. Their argument for Joe Biden boiled down to the fact that they think he's a nice guy. Well, let me tell you, raising taxes on 82% of Americans is not nice. Eliminating 10 million good paying oil and gas jobs is not nice. Policies that force jobs to flee our country or allow abortion up until the point of birth are not nice. The truth is there's only one person who has empathized with everyday Americans and actually been fighting for them over the past four years and that is President Donald Trump. In the nearly four years I've worked on behalf of President Trump, I've seen up close a man who has a deep love for family, a man who has reverence for the office of the presidency, a man with an incredible respect for law enforcement and our military. I've seen private moments where he comforts Americans in times of pain and sadness. Now everyone knows he can be tough. He's tough when he takes on China, Tough when he works to fix our unfair trade deals. Tough when he fights to secure our borders. President Trump is always going to be tough when he is fighting for the American people because nice guys like Joe cared more about countries like China and Iran than the United States of America. Tonight begins a new chapter in the great American story. A story that has inspired the world for generations. And when we reelect President Trump this November, the best is yet to come. This election is the most important in our lifetime. Your vote counts more than ever. If you want to check your voting status, secure your ballot, or register to vote, text VOTE to 88022. Earlier today, President Trump and Vice President Pence came to North Carolina to thank our delegates for unanimously renominating them to a second term. Our official roll call and the business of our Republican convention was conducted today in Charlotte. We have created a short video to symbolize the excitement for President Trump across all 50 states and territories. Thank you for watching. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. The great state of Alabama. Alaska. American side boy. Arizona. Arkansas. California. Colorado. Connecticut. Delaware. District of Columbia. Florida. Georgia. Guam. Hawaii. Hawaii. Idaho. Illinois. Indiana. Iowa. Kansas. Kentucky. Louisiana. Maine. Maryland. Massachusetts. Michigan. Minnesota. Mississippi. Missouri. Montana. Nebraska. Nevada. New Hampshire. New Jersey. New Mexico. New York. The North Carolina. North Dakota. The Northern Mariana Islands. Ohio. Oklahoma. Oregon. Pennsylvania. Puerto Rico. Rhode Island. South Carolina. South Dakota. Tennessee. Yeah. United States Virgin Islands.
Utah. Vermont. Virginia. Washington. Washington. West Virginia. Wisconsin. Wyoming. are excited to nominate Donald J. Trump and Vice President Mike Pence for four more years. Thank you for all you've done to make America great again. It is our privilege to nominate you for four more years. And we know the best is yet to come. I didn't back down from my promises, and I've kept every single one. This current administration had made hope possible. We want this nation to continue to be the beacon of hope for the world. How many people said they're going to leave America if Donald Trump was elected? They're all still here and they're not going anywhere because we are in the land of the free. We will never, ever sign bad trade deals. America first again. America first. America's great USMCA trade bill. This is a big win for the United States of America. This is a great trade deal. We are going to lift the restrictions on the production of American energy. We will create millions of more jobs. Hope to me is the belief in a better tomorrow and creating a better future for our children. When I look in the eyes of my grandchildren, I want them to know that their papa was not silent. We will rescue kids from failing schools by helping their parents send them to a safe school of their choice. We will completely rebuild our depleted military. The countries that we are protecting at a massive cost to us will be asked to pay their fair share. We will take care of our great veterans like they have never been taken care of before. This guy saved me. Yeah. He saved me. Thanks to him. I'm here. To me, he's giving people hope, what he's doing for the poor people, what he's doing for everybody. We are going to appoint justices of the United States Supreme Court who will uphold our laws and our Constitution. By supporting law enforcement, it's so important for keeping America great. As long as I'm president, I will never defund your police that I promise you. It's time to deliver a victory for the American people. We are going to start winning again. It's called Promises Made, Promises Made. My name is Amy Ford. I've been a registered nurse for 17 years. I'm from the small town of Williamson, West Virginia, where I've lived my entire life, the daughter of a nurse and a coal miner. Even though I was the youngest of four children, I was always somewhat of a caretaker. It came natural for me. So it felt right to follow in my mother's footsteps and become a nurse. And this March, when COVID-19 sent our country into crisis, I knew I had to help any way that I could. I deployed to New York in April and then to San Antonio, Texas, working as a COVID relief nurse in both states. 
as I contended with the challenges of treating our patients who had their worlds turned upside down, I noticed a positive change in our healthcare system. President Trump recognized the threat this virus presented for all Americans early on and made rapid policy changes. And as a result, telehealth services are now accessible to more than 71 million Americans, including 35 million children. Prior to COVID, telehealth was not covered or reimbursed under Medicare, Medicaid, or CHIP. This left our most vulnerable populations with no other choice but to have an in-person office visit with their physicians, increasing their risk of exposure to COVID-19 exponentially. The expansion of telehealth services has also resulted in the integration of video visits between patients and their families allowing loved ones to have contact and visualization, as well as a better understanding of care. Telehealth has been essential during this pandemic. I don't want the media taking my personal story and twisting it, so let me be clear. As a healthcare professional, I can tell you without hesitation, Donald Trump's quick action and leadership saved thousands of lives during COVID-19 and the benefits of that response extend far beyond coronavirus. Telehealth will continue to aid many that are just unable to find transportation or a way to the doctor for regular checkups. This is especially true in rural America. I live in a town of about 2,000 people. We do not have buses, trains, trolleys, or Ubers available to us. In addition, the unavailability of services can also hinder treatment for many. So increased access to telehealth for millions of Americans has truly been life-saving, and we have President Trump to thank. From the very beginning, Democrats, the media, and the World Health Organization got coronavirus wrong. The World Health Organization said, authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Overall, most people should not be terribly concerned about it. Everything's fine here. We do want to say to people, come to Chinatown. Here we are. Come join us. We don't even think it's going to be as bad as it was in other countries. Go about your lives. Go about your business. One leader took decisive action to save lives, President Donald Trump. Banning travel from China and coronavirus epicenters, Biden charged xenophobia. But President Trump was right, signing the CARES Act, providing immediate relief to American families, workers, and businesses, declaring a national emergency, tapping into $42 billion in existing emergency funding, quickly getting crucial personal protective equipment to the states, signing the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, ensuring that American families and businesses impacted by the virus receive the strong support they need, launching Operation Warp Speed to fast track a vaccine in record time. He said everything that I could have hoped for, promise made, promise kept. He is ready, willing, and able to help. He has been responsive. He's done a lot of good things. What the federal government did was a phenomenal accomplishment. In our hour of need, you all literally are helping us in a big way. We were at the edge, and this is life or death stuff, and we're forever thankful for that. Soon, we will emerge safer, stronger, and greater than ever. I am Dr. G. E. Golly, an oral and maxillofacial surgeon and chancellor of a large academic medical and research center in Louisiana. I feel uniquely positioned to share how President Trump's decisive leadership led to a rapid and efficient response to the coronavirus pandemic. I know this as a health professional and as someone who has recovered from COVID himself. The COVID-19 pandemic exploded into our great nation with an intensity unparalleled in history but our medical investigation and drug development systems were not designed for a pandemic. The devastating effects of the coronavirus demanded immediate changes at the regulatory level. A prompt response led by President Trump cleared away the red tape that usually makes drug approvals a long and drawn out process. 
By harnessing the resources of the federal government and the private sector, President Trump's Operation Warp Speed is accelerating the testing, supply, development, and distribution of therapeutics, diagnostics, and very shortly, effective vaccines to counter COVID-19. Let me give you three clear examples of how President Trump's leadership removed regulatory barriers so COVID patients could have faster access to effective therapies and diagnostics. First, on February 26, two phase three clinical trials studying remdesivir were initiated. Just two months later, the FDA approved remdesivir for emergency use to treat COVID-19. Normally, this is a three to five year process. The amazing speed with which this happened in a safe but efficient manner is unheard of. Second, the FDA granted expanded access to COVID-19 convalescent plasma. Within 24 hours of this approval, we were administering convalescent plasma and remdesivir to a critically ill patient, a former Army Ranger and physician. Had it not been for the rapid deployment of these medicines, this patient, who is my colleague and friend, would have surely died. And third, at the end of July, I developed a fever and cough. I reached out to our testing team and received one of the Abbott rapid tests, yet another tool quickly approved by this administration. Within 15 minutes, my test came back positive, and within four hours, I was receiving my remdesivir doses, followed by an infusion of convalescent plasma. As a physician, I've seen firsthand how these breakthroughs have saved countless lives. As a patient, I've benefited from the expedited therapies made possible by the swift action of this administration. President Trump truly moved mountains to save lives and he deserves credit. Thank you, President Trump, for providing timely access to critical diagnostics and therapeutics during this pandemic. Thank you, Mr. President, for your strong leadership in these challenging times. When the China virus invaded our country, we launched the greatest mobilization of American society since World War II. Patriots of every race, color, and creed rallied together to defeat the invisible enemy and save the lives of their fellow citizens. Today, our hearts overflow with appreciation for the incredible frontline workers who risk their own health and safety to keep America strong and safe. When crisis came, millions of everyday Americans rose to the challenge. In their actions, we see true greatness of the American character. We always find a way to victory. History will remember and celebrate the heroes of 2020 for as long as our great American flag waves over the land that we love. To every frontline worker, I offer the salute of a nation that is forever in your debt. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. These are my friends. These are the incredible workers that helped us so much with the COVID. Uh, we can call it many different things from China virus. I don't want to go through all the names because some people may get insulted, but that's the way it is. These are great, great people, doctors, nurses, a firemen, a policemen. We want to thank you all. You have been incredible, and we want to thank you and all of the millions of people that you represent. Thank you all very much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you all very much. So tell me a little about your stories. How about we'll start with you? I'm a postal worker. Delivered to senior community during COVID-19. Good. And we're taking good care of our postal workers. Absolutely. <laughs> that I can tell you. Believe me, we're not getting rid of our postal workers, you know? They'd like to sort of put that out there. If anyone does, it's the Democrats, not the Republicans. I want to thank you very much and thank everybody in that whole beautiful post office system. We appreciate it. Thank you. How about you? I'm a trucker. Good. I own a small business in Ohio. Great. Uh, hauling steel mostly. Um, you know, some of our customers actually made hospital beds with uh, some oh, wow. of the material. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. I love the truckers. You know, they're on my side. Thank you. Mr. I think Clark. all of them, frankly. I think pretty much all of them. How about you? I'm a custodian at the post Great. office as well. What do you do exactly? 
clean up everybody's you know? mess and everybody's germs and all that. Can I tell you, that, that world, that profession will never be out of business. You yeah, know that, right? Sure. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. For Thank you. And how about you? Um, I'm a registered nurse, President Good. Trump. I uh, work at a New Jersey hospital. It's called Virtual Willingboro Hospital. Right. Um, I also represent an organization of professional nurses. It's called the National Association of Catholic Nurses. Very good. But I want to tell you, sir, as a nursing supervisor, I am so in awe of your leadership. Honestly, uh, I know many people have said often interesting things, but it takes a true leader to be able to ignore all that stuff and do what is right and not be offended by all the words being said. Yeah. And you really do show that positive spirit to us. And as nurses, I appreciate that. But just as an individual, I'm grateful for that. Well, I'm for the nurses. I'm for the doctors. I'm for everybody. We just have to make this China virus go away, and it's happening. Please, go ahead. Uh, I'm also a nurse. I represent Genesis Healthcare, which is a skilled nursing facility Good, sure. company. Um, I want to thank you and your administration for all the supplies and support and right. funding that you've given the skilled nursing units. Um, without that, we couldn't do as well as we have done. Um, I spent some time in New Jersey. I live in West Virginia. Went to New Jersey and, and did some work there. And we finally started to see things change and turn around. I appreciate what you said because we have delivered billions of dollars of equipment that governors were supposed to give and in many cases they didn't get. So the federal government had to help them and all of the people that did this incredible work, they never got credit for it. But you understand where it came from. Thank you very much. Thank you both. It's really nice. Please, go ahead. I'm a police officer in Inglewood, Colorado, and I contracted COVID in late March and recovered. That means we don't have to be afraid of you at all. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm good to Once go. you're recovered, you know, we have the whole thing with plasma happening. Mm -hmm. That means your blood is very valuable. You know that, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. Please. I'm a detention deputy at the Kern County Sheriff's Department out in California. Great. And uh, I also contracted COVID um, into March and recovered from that also. How long was your problem? Um, I was sick about 10 days, really bad. I got everything besides a cough. Um, but recovered, I was off work for a month and a half, and I work in our local county jails. Did they do anything specifically to help you recover? They gave me z packs medication, cough syrup. Okay, and I won't even ask you about the hydroxychloroquine, because <laughs> it's, uh, it's a shame what they've done to that one, but, but I took it, I took the z pack also, and zinc. I want to thank you all very much. It's an honor to have you in the White House. You're fantastic people, and the people you represent, you represent an incredible group of people, and uh, we love you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good evening. I'm Congressman Jim Jordan, representing the 4th District of Ohio. The Republican Party is the pro-America party. President Trump is the pro-America candidate. This election is about who can preserve the values, principles, and institutions that make America great. Don't believe me? Look at what's happening in American cities. Cities all run by Democrats. Crime, violence, and mob rule. Democrats refuse to denounce the mob, and their response to the chaos? Defund the police, defund Border Patrol, and defund our military. And while they're doing all this, they're also trying to take away your guns. Look at the positions they've taken in the past few months. Democrats won't let you go to church, but they'll let you protest. Democrats won't let you go to work, but they'll let you riot. And Democrats won't let you go to school, but they'll let you go loot. President Trump has fought against each of their crazy ideas. He's taken on the swamp all of the swamp, the Democrats, the press, and the never Trumpers. And when you take on the swamp, the swamp fights back. They tried the Russia hoax, the Mueller investigation, and the fake impeachment. But in spite of this unbelievable opposition, this president has done what he said he would do. Taxes cut, regulations reduced, economy growing, lowest unemployment in 50 years, out of the Iran deal, embassy in Jerusalem, hostages home from North Korea, a new U.S. MCA agreement, and of course, he's building the wall and rebuilding our economy as we speak. I love the president's intensity and his willingness to fight every day in Washington for our families. But what I also appreciate about the president is something most Americans never get to see, how much he truly cares about people. Our family has seen it. Two years ago, our nephew Eli was killed in a car accident. He lived a mile up the road from us, grew up wrestling and training with our boys, was a high school state champion, varsity athlete for the University of Wisconsin. It's a Saturday morning, three days after the accident. I walked to the car to head up to Eli's parents' home when the president called. 
We talked about a few issues, and then he asked how the family was doing. I said, they're doing okay, Mr. President, but it's tough. The president said, yeah, losing a loved one is always difficult, and it's really tough when they're so young. I then said, Mr. President, I'm actually walking into their house right now. Obviously, they don't know that I'm talking to you, but if you'd be willing to say hello to Eli's dad, you'd make a terrible day a little less terrible. What's his name, the president asked. I walked through the door and said, Todd, the president wants to talk to you. For the next five minutes, family and friends sat in complete silence as the president of the United States took time to talk to a dad who was hurting. That's the president I've gotten to know the last four years. The president who shared private moments like this with soldiers, victims of violent crime, and people who've had businesses destroyed by the mob. That's the individual who's made America great again and who knows America's best days are still in front of us. And that's why I'm busting my tail to help him get reelected. I'm asking you to do the same. Thank you, and God bless our country. I'm not an actor, a singer, or a politician. I'm Herschel Walker. Most of you know me as a football player, but I'm also a father, a man of faith, and a very good judge of character. I've known Donald Trump for 37 years, and I don't mean just casual ran into him from time to time. I'm talking about a deep personal friendship. I watched him as an owner of a professional football team. Right after he bought the team, he set out to learn. He learned about the history of the team, the players, the coaches, every detail. Then he used what he learned to make the team better. I watched him in the boardroom. He can be in the middle of a big meeting, but if one of the kids was on the phone, he dropped everything to take the call. He taught me that the family should be your top priority. I watched him treat janitors, security guards, and waiters the same way he would treat a VIP. He made them feel special because he knew they were. He understands that they are the people who make this country run. They clean, they cook, they build, they drive, they deliver. He told me, Herschel, make an effort to get to know people. Remember their names. That stuck with me. One time, I planned to take his kids to Disney World with my family. At the last minute, Donald said he'd like to join us. So they was in a business suit on the, uh, it's a small world ride. That was something to see. It just shows you what a caring, loving father he is. It hurt my soul to hear the terrible names that people call Donald. The worst one is racist. I take it as a personal insult that people would think I've had a 37 year friendship with the racist. People who think that don't know what they're talking about. Growing up in the deep south, I've seen racism up close. I know what it is, and it isn't Donald Trump. Just because someone loves and respects the flag, our national anthem, and our country, doesn't mean they don't care about social justice. I care about all those things. So does Donald Trump. He shows how much he cares about social justice in the black community through his actions. And his actions speaks louder than stickers or slogans on a jersey. He keeps right on fighting to improve the lives of black Americans and all Americans. He worked night and day. He never stops. He leaves nothing on the field. Some people don't like his style, the way he knocks down obstacles that get in the way of his goals. People on the opposing team didn't like when I ran over them either, but that's how you get the job done. I pray every night that God gives him more time. Give him four more years. He has accomplished so much almost all by himself on a constant attack, but there's still more work to be done. If you love America and want to make it better, Donald Trump is your president. He's my president, and I'm blessed to call him friend. Good evening, I'm Natalie Harp, a formerly forgotten American from California. In the classic Jimmy Stewart film, It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey is given a great gift, the chance to see what the world would be like without him. Tonight, Mr. President, we'd like to give you that same gift, because without you, we'd all be living in Pottersville, sold out to a crooked Mr., or I should say, a crooked Mrs. Potter, with no hope of escape except death itself. I should know, because I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for you. About five years ago, I was the victim of a notoriously deadly medical error. I survived, but only to be diagnosed with a rare and terminal bone cancer, 
You know, the Democrats love to talk about health care being a human right, but a right to what? Well, I'll tell you. To them, it's a right to marijuana, opioids, and the right to die with dignity, a politically correct way of saying assisted suicide. I was told I was a burden to my family and to my country, and that by choosing to die early, I'd actually be saving the lives of others by preserving resources for them rather than wasting them on a lost cause like myself. And when I failed the chemotherapies that were on the market, no one wanted me in their clinical trials. I'd make them look bad. They didn't give me the right to try experimental treatments, Mr. President. You did. And without you, I'd have died waiting for them to be approved. Now with the coronavirus, everyone knows what that feels like to be waiting for a cure. But we've only been waiting a few months. Just imagine what 2020 would have looked like fighting for your life without Donald Trump fighting for it too. In January, there would have been no China travel ban. Millions would have died. Millions more would have been infected, for there'd be no record levels of testing, no right to try treatments, no fast track for a vaccine, nor Operation Warp Speed ready to deliver it. And without Donald Trump as our patient advocate for the past four years, well, the opioid epidemic would have stolen even more lives from even more families. Kidney patients would have no future except dying on wait lists, for there'd be no initiative to increase donations. There'd still be no accountability at the VA, and our brave veterans would still be suffering long wait times with no choice nor access to faster care. Insulin and other drug prices would have continued to rise, while a record number of generic drugs would still be stuck in the pipeline. There'd be no price transparency. We wouldn't have health plans up to 60% cheaper than Obamacare, and we'd still be stuck with that infamous individual mandate. And God forbid what the next four years would look like. For in Joe Biden's America, China would control our drug production. We'd be one step closer to government-run health care. We wouldn't just be unable to keep our doctors. We'd be lucky if we could see any doctor. And even then, some of us would be denied care. For in socialized medicine, you don't beat the odds. You become the odds. And I would lose my right to try, just like Charlie Gard, that terminally ill British baby whose government-run healthcare system decided it was too expensive and too cruel to keep him alive. You see, Mr. President, you've done so much more than your promises made and promises kept. For numbers, only tell part of the story. We are the rest of it. Facts with faces of Americans who would still be forgotten if you and our favorite First Lady hadn't given up your own wonderful life so we could have the chance at one. George Bailey's father was right. All you can take with you is that which you've given away. And Mr. President, that makes you the richest man in the world, for you have used your strength to make America strong again. Sacrifice the life you built to make America proud again. And you risked everything to make America safe again. It's a wonderful life. You made America great again. And on November 3rd, we are going to keep America great. Hello, America. My name is Vernon Jones, and I'm a state representative from the great state of Georgia. As you can see, I'm a man of color, and I'm a lifelong Democrat, too. You may be wondering, why is a lifelong Democrat speaking at the Republican National Convention? And that's a fair question. And here's your answer. The Democratic Party does not want black people to leave their mental plantation. We've been forced to be there for decades and generations. But I have news for Joe Biden. We are free. We are free people with free minds. And I'm part of a large and growing segment of the black community who are independent thinkers, and we believe that Donald Trump is the president that America needs to lead us forward. This is no time for sleeping in the basement. Joe Biden has had 47 years to produce results. 
but he's been all talk and no action, just like so many of the Democrats who've been making promises to the black voters for decades. We've been their captive audience. When President Trump sought to earn the black vote, the Democratic Party leaders went crazy. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer literally started wearing kente cloths around the, the, the U.S. Capitol, as if pandering were enough to keep us satisfied. Let me tell you why I'm supporting our president. I grew up in the South, in Laurel Hill, North Carolina, Scotland County, the Green Pond community to be exact. My parents, Robin and Rufa Jones, built with their own hands a four-room cinder block home with no indoor plumbing. They had very limited education, but they instilled in us a strong work ethic that drove me from those tobacco fields of North Carolina to those hallowed halls of the Georgia General Assembly. My parents taught me if I believed in God, worked hard and treated every person fairly, there was no limit to what we could achieve. I attended North Carolina Central University, an historical black college. For generations, HBCUs have been the incubators that developed black scholars in math and science and religion, engineering and politics. They have been important springboards for the black success. But Democrats haven't treated them that way. When President Trump took office, he changed everything. He delivered historic funding to HBCUs and he guaranteed it for 10 years, something that has never happened in the history of this country. That gave our HBCUs stability, the chance to grow, and produce the next generation of black leaders. That's right, Donald Trump did that. He's also supported school choice to ensure that no child, no matter their race or zip code, is left behind. Every child should have access to a quality education. But education is just the beginning. The president also built the most inclusive economy ever with record low unemployment for African Americans and record high participation in the workforce. He put opportunity zones in the Trump tax bill that would drive investment into our communities for decades to come. He put the interests of American workers, and especially black workers, first. That's right, Donald Trump did that. He delivered historic criminal justice reform. He ended once and for all the policy of inc incarceration of black people which has decimated our communities, caused by no other than Joe Biden. Democrats wouldn't do it, Obama didn't want to do it, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris definitely wouldn't do it. But Donald Trump did it. He's also working every day to make our communities safer. As a former executive of DeKalb County, Georgia, I directed one of the largest public safety departments in the Southeast. I've seen tragic shootings on both sides, officers killing citizens and citizens killing officers in the line of duty. Police officers are our fellow citizens. They live in our country. They have families too. They live in our communities. Unfortunately, Democrats have turned their backs on our brave police officers. They call it defunding. And it's a danger to our cities, our neighborhoods, and our children. Isn't it ironic that Democrat politicians have personal security to protect them? So why don't they forego their security and replace them with social workers, especially since that's what they want for you and me? Our police need more funding, not less. For frequent psychological examinations, for non-lethal remote restraint technology, and for more de-escalation and use of force training. These are the common sense solutions that President Trump supports. True, sincere police reform. That's right, Donald Trump did that too. Education, jobs, safety, security. On issue after issue, and in just a single term, he destroyed these negative forces that have victimized 
the black community for decades. He gave us the opportunity to rise. Now, you know, when I made the public announcement of my support for President Trump, all hell broke loose. I was threatened, called an embarrassment, and asked to resign by my own party. Unfortunately, that's consistent with the Democratic Party and how they view independent thinking black men and women. But I'm here to tell you that black voices are becoming more woke and louder than ever. The Democratic Party has become infected with a pandemic of intolerance, bigotry, socialism, anti-law enforcement bias, and a dangerous tolerance for people who attack others, destroy their property, and terrorize our own communities. That's what this election is all about. And that's why right now, more than ever, more than ever before, America needs Donald Trump in the Oval Office for another four years. God bless you and vote Donald J. Trump. Thank you. In 2018, a gunman walked into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and changed my life forever. My name is Andrew Pollock. His name isn't worth saying. One of the seniors walking in the hallways that day was my beautiful daughter, Meadow. She was just months away from graduating and beginning a new life. We were so proud of the woman she had become. But in the hallway on that third floor, the gunman saw Meadow and shot her down the hallway, hitting her four times. After she was shot and on the floor, she crawled over to another student, a freshman girl, to protect her. She draped her body over her, and then the scumbag gunman shot my daughter at point-blank range five more times, killing Meadow and the girl she was shielding. She had a whole life ahead of her. And in that life, she could have done anything and been anything. So many moments that I waited so long for were taken from me. I didn't get to drop her off at college. I didn't get to walk her down the aisle. But every moment was taken from her, and for what? I never wanted this to become a political spectacle, but it did. I never wanted to meet the president like this, but I did. I was invited to the White House. The truth is, I had just buried my daughter that week. I really wasn't interested in public events like a tour or a photo op. I was interested in answers and solutions. So if the president wanted to meet me personally, I said I'd go. They said, of course, that was his plan. At the White House, my family and I sat with the president in the Oval Office and told him about Meadow. I told him what we knew. I told him that his administration needed to take a closer look at what went wrong and why. And I got to see who President Trump really is. He's a good man and a great listener, and he cuts through the BS. Then the president did what he said he would do. He took action. He formed a school safety commission that issued dozens of recommendations to make schools safer. But I'll bet you never heard about that. Instead, the media turned my daughter's murder into a coordinated attack on President Trump, Republicans, and our Second Amendment. In fact, when President Trump asked me and other parents of children that were murdered in school shootings to join him as he announced the commission's findings, the media's first question wasn't about protecting kids. Shockingly, they asked about the government shutdown. President Trump turned to me appalled and said, Andy, can you believe these people? We're trying to talk about school safety, and this is what they do. But I could believe it. After my daughter's murder, the media didn't seem interested in the facts. So I found them myself. I learned that gun control laws didn't fail my daughter. People did. The gunman had threatened to kill his classmates before. He had threatened to rape them. He had threatened to shoot up the school. 
every red flag you could imagine. But the school didn't just miss these red flags, they knowingly ignored them. Far left Democrats in our school district made this shooting possible because they implemented something they called restorative justice. This policy, which really just blames teachers for students' failures, puts kids and teachers at risk and makes shootings more likely. But it was billed as a pioneering approach to discipline and safety. I was just fine with the old approach to discipline and safety. It was called discipline and safety. But the Obama-Biden administration took Parkland's bad policies and forced them into schools across America. When President Trump rescinded Obama's guidance on restorative justice policies, he put an end to that. And that meant the world to me. It's hard to tell how much Mr. Biden understands about what happened at Parkland. Mr. Biden has campaigned on bringing back restorative justice as part of, as part of his unity platform with Bernie Sanders and has pledged to implement in school districts across America. But he doesn't even seem to know when the shooting happened. He said that he was vice president when it happened, but he wasn't. Mr. Biden may not know when my daughter was murdered, but I do. February 14, 2018. Mr. Biden may not know that these policies make shootings more likely, but I do. Mr. Biden may not know who was vice president that day, but I do. It wasn't Joe Biden, it was Mike Pence, thank God. And I know who the president was, too. It wasn't Barack Obama. It was President Donald J. Trump, and he took action. I truly believe the safety of our kids depends on whether this man is reelected. I hope you'll join me in helping to make that happen. Mr. President, myself and millions of Americans appreciate you and love you. God bless America, and God bless our president, Donald J. Trump. Thank you. Now in effect for the city of St. Louis. Protests in St. Louis turned violent. Mark McClowski says he and his family have been threatened with violence. Under Missouri law, you have a right to defend your home and the lives of your family. A search warrant has been executed at the home of Mark and Patricia McCleskey. The husband and wife attorneys charged with pointing guns at protesters. They were simply trying to protect their home. Good evening, America. We are Mark and Patty McCloskey. who are speaking to you tonight from St. Louis, Missouri, where just weeks ago you may have seen us defending our home as a mob of protesters descended on our neighborhood. America is such a great country that not only do you have the right to own a gun and use it to defend yourself, but thousands of Americans will offer you free advice on how to use it. At least that's what we experienced. What you saw happen to us could just as easily happen to any of you who are watching from quiet neighborhoods around our country. And that's what we want to speak to you about tonight. That's exactly right. Whether it's the defunding of police ending cash bail so criminals can be released back out on the streets the same day to riot again, or encouraging anarchy and chaos on our streets. It seems as if the Democrats no longer view the government's job as protecting honest citizens from criminals, but rather protecting criminals from honest citizens. Not a single person in the out of control mob you saw at our house was charged with a crime. But you know who was? We were. They've actually charged us with felonies for daring to defend our home. On top of that, consider this. The Marxist liberal activist leading the mob to our neighborhood stood outside our home with a bullhorn screaming, you can't stop the revolution. Just weeks later, that same Marxist activist won the Democrat nomination to hold a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. In the city of St. Louis, that's the same as winning the general election. That Marxist revolutionary is now going to be the congresswoman from the first district of Missouri. These radicals are not content with marching in the streets. They want to walk the halls of Congress. They want to take over. They want power. This is Joe Biden's party. These are the people who will be in charge of your future and the future of your children. 
They're not satisfied with spreading the chaos and violence into our communities. They want to abolish the suburbs altogether by ending single-family home zoning. This forced rezoning would bring crime, lawlessness, and low-quality apartments into now-thriving suburban neighborhoods. President Trump smartly ended this government overreach, but Joe Biden wants to bring it back. These are the policies that are coming to a neighborhood near you. So make no mistake, no matter where you live, your family will not be safe in the radical Democrats' America. At this moment in history, if you stand up for yourself and for the values our country was founded on, the mob, spurred on by their allies in the media, will try to destroy you. You've seen us on your TV screens and Twitter feeds. You know that we're not the kind of people who back down. Thankfully, neither is Donald Trump. President Trump will defend the God-given right of every American to protect their homes and their families. But more than that, Trump's vision for America is a country where you have an opportunity to work hard and build the life you dream of with a job you love, with your children being educated in great schools, in a community where your family can play in the backyard without fear, worship in a church without shame, and express your beliefs without retribution. Trump brought us the greatest economy our country had ever seen. The Democrats have brought us nothing but destruction. When we don't have basic safety and security in our communities, we'll never be free to build a brighter future for ourselves, for our children, or for our country. That's what's at stake in this election, and that's why we must reelect Donald Trump. God bless you, God bless the president, and, and God, God bless, bless the United, United States. States. Good evening, America. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle. I speak to you tonight as a mother, a former prosecutor, a Latina, and a proud American. And yes, a proud supporter of President Donald J. Trump. Why? Because he is the president who delivers for America. He built the greatest economy the world has ever known for the strivers, the working class and middle class. As commander in chief, he always puts America first. President Trump is the law and order president. Now presidential leadership is not guaranteed. It is a choice. Biden, Harris, and the rest of the socialists will fundamentally change this nation. They want open borders, closed schools, dangerous amnesty, and will selfishly send your jobs back to China while they get rich. They will defund, dismantle, and destroy America's law enforcement. When you are in trouble and need police, don't count on the Democrats. As a first-generation American, I know how dangerous their socialist agenda is. My mother, Mercedes, was a special education teacher from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. My father, also an immigrant, came to this nation in pursuit of the American dream. Now I consider it my duty to fight to protect that dream. Rioters must not be allowed to destroy our cities. Human sex drug traffickers should not be allowed to cross our border. The same socialist policies which destroyed places like Cuba and Venezuela must not take root in our cities and our schools. If you want to see the socialist Biden-Harris future for our country, just take a look at California. It is a place of immense wealth, immeasurable innovation, and immaculate environment. And the Democrats turned it into a land of discarded heroin needles in parks, riots in streets, and blackouts in homes. In President Trump's America, we light things up. We don't dim them down. We build things up. We don't burn them down. We kneel in prayer and we stand for our flag. This election is a battle for the soul of America. Your choice is clear. Do you support the cancel culture 
the cosmopolitan elites of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Joe Biden, who blame America first. Do you think America is to blame? Or do you believe in American greatness? Believe in yourself, in President Trump, in individual and personal responsibility. They want to destroy this country and everything that we have fought for and hold dear. They want to steal your liberty, your freedom. They want to control what you see and think and believe so that they can control how you live. They want to enslave you to the weak, dependent, liberal, victim ideology to the point that you will not recognize this country or yourself. From the beginning, when President Trump spoke about making America great again, he was speaking about that shining city on a hill and restoring the beacon of light that once shined so bright. His promise was to put America first, and he has. When President Trump cut middle-class taxes, putting tens of thousands of dollars back in the pockets of working-class Americans, that beacon began to flicker once again. When President Trump commanded the defeat of ISIS, took out al-Baghdadi and Soleimani, and paved the way for peace in the Middle East, that beacon started to glow. When he negotiated historic trade deals with Canada, Mexico, Japan, and China, bringing back thousands of manufacturing jobs to America, that beacon shined bright once again for the world to see. America, it's all on the line. President Trump believes in you. He emancipates and lifts you up to live your American dream. You are capable. You are qualified, you are powerful, and you have the ability to choose your life and determine your destiny. Don't let the Democrats take you for granted. Don't let them step on you. Don't let them destroy your families, your lives, and your future. Don't let them kill future generations because they told you and brainwashed you and fed you lies that you weren't good enough. Like my parents, you can achieve your American dream. You can be that shining example to the world. Manifest and be the change in this country that you dream, that you hope, that you believe in. Stand for an American president who is fearless, who believes in you, and who loves this country and will fight for her. President Trump is the leader who will rebuild the promise of America and ensure that every citizen can realize their American dream. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders and fighters for freedom and liberty and the American dream, the best is yet to come. I'm Congressman Steve Scalise. We're facing some tough challenges in America. This isn't the first time we've been here. I've worked closely with Donald Trump over the last few years, and if there's one constant theme to how he approaches problems, it's how much he cares about the hardworking people that Washington left behind. I've seen this firsthand. After I was shot on a baseball field by a leftist gunman, first responders rushed me to a hospital where I battled for my life. That same night, Donald Trump came to the hospital along with First Lady Melania Trump. They consoled my wife, Jennifer. They were there for my family in my darkest hours. Donald Trump would call to check on me throughout the following weeks just to see how I was doing. That's the kind of person he is. That's the side of Donald Trump that the media will never show you. Look, there's a lot at stake. This is an election between a party that wants to burn down the foundations of our country to the ground and a party that wants to rebuild and protect our great nation. The left wants to defund the police. This is personal to me. I wouldn't be here without the bravery and heroism of the men and women in law enforcement who saved my life. President Trump stands with those brave men and women. 
Joe Biden has embraced the left's insane mission to defund them. There won't be an America to leave to our children and grandchildren without those brave law enforcement officers and first responders. Joe Biden's made a career in Washington for 47 years, promising things he's never delivered. In just three short years, President Trump has delivered huge wins for American families. While Joe Biden made hollow promises when he chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee, Donald Trump took action and delivered criminal justice reform. Joe Biden claims to care about the working man, but millions of good manufacturing jobs were shipped overseas during the Obama-Biden years to countries like China. Donald Trump brought those jobs back. I've seen how deeply President Trump cares about rebuilding our evaporating middle class. President Trump pledged to give the forgotten men and women of America a real shot at the American dream. And again, he delivered. The lowest unemployment rate in over 50 years, women creating small businesses at record pace, wages rising, the fastest, by the way, for lowest income levels. What can Joe Biden say to that? What has Joe Biden done in his 47 years in Washington that can compare to that? President Trump has delivered for the hardworking people of this great nation. It's gonna take that kind of bold leadership to get us out of this COVID crisis. After President Trump saved lives by shutting down flights from China and Europe, he's now focusing the full weight of the government on a revolutionary plan to cure this virus by cutting red tape and empowering scientists to create a vaccine. This is visionary leadership in action at a time when we can't afford another 47 years of hollow promises. America's been through tough times before. Who better to lead us out of these times than the president who already built the strongest economy our country has ever seen? Donald Trump did it before. Donald Trump will deliver for us again. God bless you and God bless these United States of America. I'm Sean Parnell, and it is an honor to be here. In 2006, the Army sent me to Afghanistan as a young platoon leader placed in command of Americans from every corner of our planet. Our platoon reflected the diversity of our nation, every race, creed, and religion. Despite those differences, we were bound together as brothers from the same American family. On June 10, 2006, our platoon was attacked just after dawn. Outnumbered 10 to 1, we endured mortar and machine gun fire as hundreds of Taliban charged us from three sides. We had 24 men that day. Wave after wave of Taliban advanced up the hill. I was wounded three times in the fighting. Nearly all of my platoon was wounded within the first minute, but the enemy kept coming. We fought to our last rounds of ammunition, and when it was over, we held the hill. In the face of death, I saw ordinary Americans become heroes. In our darkest hour, when our survival depended on each other, my men and I learned an important lesson. We all bleed red. Our differences did not define us. United, we were unbeatable. After 485 days of combat, I came home eager to enjoy the freedoms I risked my life to defend. But I watched with alarm as the party of my grandfather, a lifelong Union Democrat, turned against the very people it professed to represent. I watched as Joe Biden spit venom at an auto worker who dared to question Joe's intent to dismantle the Second Amendment and take your guns. Where Democrats once stood for hardworking, law-abiding Americans who displayed our flag with pride, this new Democrat party considers these people uneducated racists clinging to guns and Bibles. The party of Harry Truman became the party of hedge fund managers, Hollywood celebrities, tech moguls, and university professors, all bloated with contempt for middle America. I look across the aisle and I do not see a party that wants you to pursue your dreams. I see a Democrat party that wants to dictate what those dreams are. I don't see a party that wants you to be free. I see a party that wants to chain you to conformity and will destroy anyone they deem a heretic. I swore an oath to defend my country and its constitution. President Trump has sworn to do the same. That's why he's advanced freedom despite savage political attacks to overcome the agenda of the radical left. 
President Trump has unleashed the economic might of this nation like no other president in our history. He triggered the rising tide of working families, brought us energy independence, reclaimed jobs from overseas that, you know, Democrats said would never return. He has fiercely defended the besieged First and Second Amendments. That is just a start. With four more years, imagine what we can achieve by simply working with our president. I believe in our president's vision for the future. I stand here tonight calling on all Americans to join us. It doesn't matter what you look like, who you love, how you worship your gender or your job. If you're a traditional Democrat who's become disillusioned with how radical your party has become, then stand with us. You are most welcome. America needs all her patriots to rush to her defense. My fellow Americans, I promise you this. In our tent, you are free. Free to speak the truth, choose your journey, define your life. You have the power to go as far as you aim, then aim higher and keep going because that is what Americans do. We are idealists and dreamers, lovers of adventure. We're rugged and independent. We don't make excuses. We make the impossible a reality. Think about it. In a century, we went from groundbound dreamers gazing to the stars to doers who created the means to reach them. This is not the time to stand on the sidelines. If you love our country as we do, as our president does, join the chorus of patriot voices that will preserve this exceptional union. Mr. President, lead the way. Millions in our American family believe in this path to destiny. Guide us to that horizon. Thank you, and may God bless the United States of America. We come together to imagine a future determined by the shining light of our hopes and values and faith. A country where we are judged by our character with dignity and respect for all. The belief that all are created equal, that lives matter irrespective of race, creed, or color. Committed to excelling beyond our dreams. Four years ago, we faced an historic crossroad. Career politicians promising change every election, but delivering emptiness. We chose a different path, a man who is not a politician, a man who cares, a man who works tirelessly for you. Still, politicians spun their deceptions and obstructed progress, fanning the flames of lawlessness. We all know that it is easy to criticize. It takes a true leader to solve problems. COVID-19, while others criticize without solutions, President Trump's swift action saved lives. And as leading Democrats want to keep businesses closed down, our president is leading the way for a full economic recovery. We are America. We as Americans work together to overcome challenges, write our own stories. America, land of promise, land of opportunity, land of heroes, land of greatness. I would die here. American hostages, forgotten and wasting away in far off prisons, wrongfully detained by foreign governments. Americans were beaten, abused, starved, and left for dead. Until President Donald Trump stepped in. The free 
American hostages finally back on U.S. soil after being held captive in North Korea. We're following some breaking news in Turkey where an American pastor, Andrew Brunson, has been released. An American jailed in Egypt is back in the U.S. this morning after an intervention by the Trump administration. A tough and skilled negotiator, President Trump successfully won the release of detainees and prisoners, among the most of any president in American history. While families waited in despair for news of their loved ones, President Trump provided a new spark of hope by bringing our hostages home. We have Danny Birch back home, where he should be. He was in Yemen in a very horrible situation. Yesterday, the United States government secured the release of Caitlin Coleman, Joshua Boyle, and their three children. Today, we are bringing home another American citizen. We just had news that Turkey released a prisoner that we were trying to get to the United States. Under this administration, America has not and will not turn its back on our people. President Trump will bring them home. Diplomacy, negotiation skills, perseverance, faith, the ingredients of hope when there is no hope. No American should ever be left behind. Priority, freeing American hostages. We have six incredible people who were held hostage by various countries. And I'm very pleased to let everybody know that we brought back over 50 hostages from 22 different countries. We worked very hard on it, Ambassador O'Brien and others. And I will tell you, we, uh, we're very proud of the job we did. But I'd like to ask maybe uh, Pastor Brunson to say a few words so we can go through and just give us a little history of what happened and how is life treating you. I was held in Turkey uh, for two years, and uh, you took unprecedented steps, actually, to secure my release, and your administration really fought for me. And I, don't, I think if you hadn't done that, I may still be in Turkey. So I'm we're very grateful. 28 that. years, right? They had you there we're, for, we're, they had you scheduled for a long time, Andrew. Yes. We had to get you back. And I, I have to say that, to me, President Erdogan was very good. And I know they had you scheduled for a long time, and you were a very innocent person. And uh, he ultimately, after we had a few conversations, he agreed. So we appreciate that, and we appreciate the people of Turkey. And you still appreciate the people of Turkey, I understand, right? We love the Turkish people. We still That's great. Us. It's great to have you back, Andrew. Thank you. Please. Mr. President, thank you for having me. Thank My name is Sam Goodwin. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Right. I was held in Syria for 63 days. And uh, I'm, I think I speak for my fellow former hostages and detainees here when I say I'm as grateful as I've ever been for anything to be home safely. And uh, thank you for the invitation and opportunity to be here. Uh, particularly, Ambassador O'Brien was incredibly supportive and helpful to my family. And I uh, can't say enough nice things about him. Thank you for promoting him. Good. And uh, just really happy to be here, so thank you. We got you back. You got me back, yeah. We got you all back, and we have some more that we're working on right now to get back that we better do. Please, go ahead. My name is Michael White, Mr. President. I do, once again, it's an honor to be here, honor to meet you in person. Basically, what had happened with me is I went and traveled over to the country of Iran. It turned out it was a major, major trap, and I was uh, apprehended there. I went through a lot in their injustice system, in the Iranian justice system. Iran is an oppressive, extortionist, terrorist regime. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but what you did, sir, is you were able to get me out of that prison in record time. It was amazing. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, really friend. Appreciate the honor's it. all mine. Please. Yeah, my name is Josh Holt. This is my wife, Tammy. Yes. Uh, we were held hostage in Venezuela for two years. I know very well. <laughs> um, and you, you helped us get out. Uh, Senator Hatch worked with you very well on that as well. Um, and it was a, a great honor to be able to meet you right when we got back. And I remember a lot of people asking, what was it like meeting President Trump? And I just say, I was, I was blown away. I just got released after two years. Then I'm shaking the hand of the president in the Oval Office. So I don't really remember a whole lot of it. So it's nice to meet you again. And uh, it's been great. It's been great to be back helping people through situations that they've gone through. And now we have to start our family. Well, the great people of Utah really wanted me to do something about the two of you. And we were able to do it. And a little bit of a miracle, I think, frankly. It was. Because it was a very hostile period. And uh, we appreciate everybody working so hard with us. But 
We were able to get you both back. And are you living in Utah now, I yeah, hope? We're still living in Utah. That's good. We'll say hello to the folks in Utah, because they're great people. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Please. I'm Brian there. Spent an unexpected trip there in India. I was not going to India. I was going through India to Nepal, where I've been working for the last 18 years. But on behalf of my family and myself, thank you, uh, President Trump, for getting us out and getting us home. The darkest moment of our whole time together, uh, your letter to my wife came. And it really gave her the hope and the peace. And That's great. From that time forward, as more people got involved, especially the ambassador there, in uh, India, things became more peaceful and, and the hope uh, was there for the last four months that we really would get to come home because they had planned on keeping me for uh, three to five years. The, the original charge thing was three to five years right. and, and that was cleared and then they came up with new charges to do a seven year uh, term. Well, India responded very well to my request. Good. So we appreciate that. We and appreciate, appreciate everything y'all did. Thank you all for being with us. We have a few more people we want to get back, and we will get them back, and they'll be back very soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great stories. Hello. My name is Maximo Alvarez. I live in Miami, Florida, not far from the state of Florida, which is in just a 90-mile wide blue strip on a map for me. It divides freedom from fear. It divides the past from the present, from the future. I know all about the past. I'll never forget my own. My family has fled totalitarianism and communism more than once. First my dad from Spain, then from Cuba. But my family is done running away. By the grace of God, I live the American dream, the greatest blessing I ever had. My dad only had a sixth grade education, told me, don't lose this place. You will never be as well against me. I'm speaking to you today because my family is done abandoning what we rightfully earned. There's no place to hide. I'm speaking to you today because President Trump may not always be politically correct. He's in fact a successful businessman, you know, your average career politician. Our president is just another family man, a friend, and most important, our elected commander in chief who puts America first. Keep in mind the other guy running for president is mostly concerned about power. Yes, yes, power for them but not for the benefit of all Americans. I'm speaking to you today because I have seen people like this before. I've seen movements like this before. I've seen ideas like this before. And I am here to tell you, we cannot let them take over our country. I heard the promises of Fidel Castro, and I can never forget all those who grew up around me who look like me, who suffered and starved and died because they believe those empty promises. They swallow the communist poison pill. If you have a chance, go to the Freedom Tower in Miami. Stop and listen. You can still hear the sounds of those broken promises. It is the sound of waves in the ocean, carrying families clinging to pieces of wood. Families with children who can swim, but willing to risk everything to reach this blessed land. It is the sound of tears hitting the paper of an application to become an American citizen. Most heard and liked the promises, but soon after, they experienced the reality. Look at them. Listen to them, learn the truth. Those false promises spread the wealth. Free education, free health care, defund the police. Trust the socialist state more than your family and your community. They don't sound radical to my ears. 
they sound familiar. And Fidel Castro was asked if he was a communist. He said he was a Roman Catholic. He knew he had to hide the truth. But the country I was born in is gone, totally destroyed. When I watch the news in Seattle, Chicago, Portland, and other cities, when I see the history being rewritten, when I hear the promises, I've heard echoes, I've heard echoes of the former life I never wanted to hear again. I see shadows I thought I had outrun. My parents only wanted one person to decide my fate, me. Not some party member, not some government official, not some bureaucrat. In America, I would decide my own future. I am so grateful to America, the place where I was able to build my American dream through hard work and determination. President Trump knows that the American story was written by people just like you and I, who love our country and take risks to build a future for our families and neighbors. I may be a Cuban born, but I am 100% American. This is the greatest country in the world. And I said this before, if I gave away everything that I have today, it would not equal 1% of what I was given when I came to this great country of ours. The gift of freedom right now it is up to us to decide our fate and to choose freedom over oppression. President Trump, he's fighting the forces of anarchy and communism. And I know he will continue to do just that. And what about his opponent and the rest of the DC swamp? I have no doubt that will hand the country over to those dangerous forces. You and I will decide. And here's what I've decided. My decision is very easy. I choose President Trump because I choose America. I choose freedom. I still hear my dad. There is no other place to go. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless America. The Democrats are just going more and more left. Many positive about socialism, liking it more than capitalism. Many of the ideas we fought for that were considered radical are now mainstream. The compromise that uh, they came up with, if implemented, will make Biden the most progressive president uh, since FDR. The radical left has taken over the Democratic Party, and Joe Biden is marching in lockstep with them. Biden and the far left are promising to crush middle-class families with trillions in new taxes. If you elect me, your taxes are going to be raised, not cut. Promising amnesty and health care for 11 million illegal immigrants. Citizenship for 11 million undocumented folks. Promising to shut down energy exploration, killing jobs, and hurting America's economy. I guarantee I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. In Joe Biden's America, the radical left get whatever they want, and you get to pay for it. They've already taken over Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. Don't let them take over America. Good evening. I'm Nikki Haley, and it's great to be back at the Republican National Convention. I'll start with a little story. It's about an American ambassador to the United Nations, and it's about a speech she gave to this convention. She called for the re-election of the Republican president she served, and she called out his Democratic opponent, a former vice president 
from a failed administration. That ambassador said, and I quote, Democrats always blame America first. The year was 1984. The president was Ronald Reagan, and Ambassador Jean Kirkpatrick's words are just as true today. Joe Biden and the Democrats are still blaming America first. Donald Trump has always put America first, and he has earned four more years as president. It was an honor of a lifetime to serve as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations. Now, the UN is not for the faint of heart. It's a place where dictators, murderers, and thieves denounce America and then put their hands out and demand that we pay their bills. Well, President Trump put an end to all of that. With his leadership, we did what Barack Obama and Joe Biden refused to do. We stood up for America, and we stood against our enemies. Obama and Biden let North Korea threaten America. President Trump rejected that weakness, and we passed the toughest sanctions on North Korea in history. Obama and Biden let Iran get away with murder and literally sent them a plane full of cash. President Trump did the right thing and ripped up the Iran nuclear deal. Obama and Biden led the United Nations to denounce our friend and ally, Israel. President Trump moved our embassy to Jerusalem, and when the UN tried to condemn us, I was proud to cast the American veto. This president has a record of strength and success. The former vice president has a record of weakness and failure. Joe Biden is good for Iran and ISIS, great for communist China, and he's a godsend to everyone who wants America to apologize, abstain, and abandon our values. Donald Trump takes a different approach. He's tough on China, and he took on ISIS and won, and he tells the world what it needs to hear. At home, the president is the clear choice on jobs and the economy. He's moved America forward, while Joe Biden has held America back. When Joe was VP, I was governor of the great state of South Carolina. We had a pretty good run. Manufacturers of all kinds flocked to our state from overseas, creating tens of thousands of American jobs. People were referring to South Carolina as the beast of the Southeast, which I loved. Everything we did happened in spite of Joe Biden and his old boss. We cut taxes. They raised them. We slashed red tape. They piled on more mandates. And when we brought in good paying jobs, Biden and Obama sued us. I fought back and they gave up. A Biden-Harris administration would be much, much worse. Last time, Joe's boss was Obama. This time, it would be Pelosi, Sanders, and the squad. Their vision for America is socialism, and we know that socialism has failed everywhere. They want to tell Americans how to live and what to think. They want a government takeover of health care. They want to ban fracking and kill millions of jobs. They want massive tax hikes on working families. Joe Biden and the socialist left would be a disaster for our economy. But President Trump is leading a new era of opportunity. Before communist China gave us the coronavirus, we were breaking economic records left and right. The pandemic has set us back, but not for long. President Trump brought our economy back before, and he will bring it back again. There's one more important area where our president is right. He knows that political correctness and cancel culture are dangerous and just plain wrong. In much of the Democratic Party, it's now fashionable to say that America is racist. That is a lie. America is not a racist country. This is personal for me. I am the proud daughter of Indian immigrants. They came to America and settled in a small southern town. 
My father wore a turban. My mother wore a sari. I was a brown girl in a black and white world. We faced discrimination and hardship, but my parents never gave in to grievance and hate. My mom built a successful business. My dad taught 30 years at a historically black college, and the people of South Carolina chose me as their first minority and first female governor. America is a story that's a work in progress. Now is the time to build on that progress and make America even freer, fairer, and better for everyone. That's why it's so tragic to see so much of the Democratic Party turning a blind eye towards riots and rage. The American people know we can do better. And of course we value and respect every black life. The black cops who've been shot in the line of duty, they matter. The black small business owners who've watched their life's work go up in flames, they matter. The black kids who've been gunned down on the playground, their lives matter too. And their lives are being ruined and stolen by the violence on our streets. It doesn't have to be like this. It wasn't like this in South Carolina five years ago. Our state came face to face with evil. A white supremacist walked into Mother Emanuel Church during Bible study. Twelve African Americans pulled up a chair and prayed with him for an hour. Then he began to shoot. After that horrific tragedy, we didn't turn against each other. We came together, black and white, Democrat and Republican. Together we made the hard choices needed to heal and removed a divisive symbol peacefully and respectfully. What happened then should give us hope now. America isn't perfect, but the principles we hold dear are perfect. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that even on our worst day, we are blessed to live in America. It's time to keep that blessing alive for the next generation. This president and this party are committed to that noble task. We seek a nation that rises together, not falls apart in anarchy and anger. We know that the only way to overcome America's challenges is to embrace America's strengths. We are striving to reach a brighter future where every child goes to a world-class school chosen by their parents, where every family lives in a safe community with good jobs, where every entrepreneur has the freedom to achieve and inspire, where every believer can worship without fear and every life is protected, where every girl and boy, every woman and man of every race and religion has the best shot at the best life. In this election, we must choose the only candidate who has and who will continue delivering on that vision. President Trump and Vice President Pence have my support, and America has our promise. We will build on the progress of our past and unlock the promise of our future. That future starts when the American people reelect President Donald Trump. Thank you, good night, and may God always bless America. Good evening, America. I'm Donald Trump, Jr. We're here tonight to talk about the great American story, to talk about this country we all love, this land of promise and opportunity, of heroes and greatness. Just a few short months ago, we were seeing the American dream become a reality for more of our citizens than ever before. The greatest prolonged economic expansion in American history, the lowest unemployment rate in nearly 50 years, the lowest unemployment rates ever for black Americans, Hispanic Americans, women, and pretty much every other demographic group. And then, courtesy of the Chinese Communist Party, the virus struck. The president quickly took action and shut down travel from China. 
Joe Biden and his Democrat allies called my father a racist and a xenophobe for doing it. They put political correctness ahead of the safety and security of the American people. Fortunately, as the virus began to spread, the president acted quickly and ensured ventilators got to hospitals that needed them most. He delivered PP&E to our brave frontline workers, and he rallied the mighty American private sector to tackle this new challenge. There's more work to do, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Job gains are outpacing what the so-called experts expected. But Biden's radical left-wing policies would stop our economic recovery cold. He's already talking about shutting the country down again. It's madness. Democrats claim to be for workers, but they've spent the entire pandemic trying to sneak a tax break for millionaires in Democrat states into the COVID relief bill. Then they attacked my father for suspending the payroll tax for middle-class workers. In fact, if you think about it, Joe Biden's entire economic platform seems designed to crush the working man and woman. He supported the worst trade deals in the history of the planet. He voted for the NAFTA nightmare. Down the tubes went our auto industry. He pushed for TPP. Goodbye, manufacturing jobs. Beijing Biden is so weak on China that the intelligence community recently assessed that the Chinese Communist Party favors Biden. They know he'll weaken us both economically and on a world stage. Biden also wants to bring in more illegal immigrants to take jobs from American citizens. His open border policies would drive wages down for Americans at a time when low income workers were getting real wage increases for the first time in modern history. He's pledged to repeal the Trump tax cuts, which were the biggest in our country. After eight years of Obama and Biden's slow growth, Trump's policies have been like rocket fuel to the economy and especially to the middle class. Biden has promised to take that money back out of your pocket and keep it in the swamp. That makes sense though, considering Joe Biden is basically the Loch Ness Monster of the swamp. For the past half century, he's been lurking around in there. He sticks his head up every now and then to run for president. Then he disappears and doesn't do much in between. So if you're looking for hope, look to the man who did what the failed Obama-Biden administration never could do and built the greatest economy our country has ever seen. And President Trump will do it again. We will be stronger than ever because when we put our mind to it, there is no obstacle that America can't surmount. Except there's a difference this time. In the past, both parties believed in the goodness of America. We agreed on where we wanted to go. We just disagreed on how to get there. This time, the other party is attacking the very principles on which our nation was founded. Freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the rule of law. Thomas Jefferson famously said, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. Our founders believed there was nothing more important than protecting our God-given right to think for ourselves. Now the left, they're trying to cancel all of those founders. They don't seem to understand this important principle. In order to improve in the future, we must learn from our past, not erase it. So we're not gonna tear down monuments and forget the people who built our great nation. Instead, we will learn from our past so we don't repeat any mistakes. And we will work tirelessly to improve the lives of all Americans. Joe Biden and the radical left are now coming for our freedom of speech. They wanna bully us into submission. If they get their way, it will no longer be the silent majority. It will be the silenced majority. This has to stop. Freedom of expression used to be a liberal value, at least before the radical left took over. Now the Republican Party is the home of free speech, the place where anyone from any background can speak their mind and may the best ideas win. People of faith are under attack. You're not allowed to go to church, but mass chaos in the streets gets a pass. It's almost like this election is shaping up to be church work and school versus rioting, looting, and vandalism. Or in the words of Biden and the Democrats, peaceful protesting. 
Anarchists have been flooding our streets, and Democrat mayors are ordering the police to stand down. Small businesses across America, many of them minority owned, are being torched by mobs. The Democrat mayors pretend it's not happening. They actually called it a summer of love. And that brings me to another important principle. Every American must be free to live without fear of violence in your country, in your communities, and in your homes. All men and women are created equal and must be treated equally under the law. That's why we must put an end to racism, and we must ensure that any police officer who abuses their powers is held accountable. What happened to George Floyd is a disgrace, and if you know a police officer, you know they agree with that too. But we cannot lose sight of the fact that our police are American heroes. They deserve our deepest appreciation. Because no matter what the Democrats say, you and I both know when we dial 911, we don't want it going to voicemail. So defunding the police is not an option. Everything starts with safety and security. You can't have anything else without it. You can't focus on building a better future for your children without the peace of mind that they can study safely in their classrooms, play safely in their neighborhoods, and sleep safely in their beds. But safety is only the beginning. Trump's America is a land of opportunity, a place of promise. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a family that could afford the best schools and the finest universities. But a great education cannot be the exclusive right of the rich and powerful. It must be accessible to all. And that's why my dad is pro-school choice. That's why he's called education access the civil rights issue, not just of our time, but of all time. It is unacceptable that too many African American and Hispanic American children are stuck in bad schools just because of their zip code. Donald Trump will not stand for it. If Democrats really wanted to help minorities and underserved communities, instead of bowing to big money union bosses, they'd let parents choose what school is best for their kids. They'd limit immigration to protect American workers. They'd support the police who protect our neighborhoods. They'd learn how to negotiate trade deals that prioritize America's interests for a change. They'd end the endless wars and quit sending our young people to solve problems in foreign lands. They'd cut taxes for families and workers. They'd create opportunity zones that drive investment into inner cities. In other words, if Democrats cared for the forgotten men and women of our country, they'd do exactly what President Trump is doing. America is the greatest country on earth, but my father's entire worldview revolves around the idea that we can always do even better. Imagine the life you want to have, one with a great job, a beautiful home, a perfect family. You can have it. Imagine the country you want to live in, one with true equal opportunity, where hard work pays off and justice is served with compassion and without partiality. You can have it. Imagine a world where the evils of communism and radical Islamic terrorism are not given a chance to spread where heroes are celebrated and the good guys win. You can have it. That is the life, that is the country, that is the world that Donald Trump and the Republican Party are after. And yes, you can have it. Because unlike Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats, our party is open to everyone. It starts by rejecting radicals who wanna drag us into the dark and embracing the man who represents a bright and beautiful future for all. It starts by re-electing Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Thank you, and God bless America. I'm Catalina Lauf. I work in the political space. And I'm Madeline Lauf, and I'm the founder of Begin Health, a children's nutritional company. We grew up in a really small town outside of Chicago. Our mom's from Guatemala. Our dad's a small business owner from Chicago. And so we brought two different cultures together to create us. A little bit of crazy and um, a little bit of fun, yeah. I guess. <laughs>
They've taught us the values of hard work, liberty, to love this country unapologetically. Our dad is a beekeeper and just had so many different things out in the countryside, and it was just such a sweet We quaint. grew up selling honey yeah. at, <laughs> at farmer's markets, so my line was, uh, have you ever been stung by a bee? <laughs> But really, it was teaching us, again, entrepreneurship, small business, self-reliance, and that we're the ones that need to put in the hard work to get what we want. You know, my mother, being from Guatemala, escaping what she had there, growing up in poverty, and coming here to the United States, being able to fulfill her destiny and be somebody that she couldn't there in her home country. And they really instilled in us the sense of um, purpose, but also uh, self-accountability, and that we had to strive to do the things that we wanted, and it was up to us to make those things happen. In America, there's no ceiling of opportunity. You know, you define your own destiny through personal responsibility, through hard work, through having a moral value system. That's the American dream, and President Trump's providing that for everybody. Look at my business, Begin Health. As a small startup that is growing and launching, we are constantly trying to innovate. And the big challenge that COVID brought that we just didn't see coming was that just almost everything kind of just shut down. And when you are a small startup and you have limited funding and the funding is really only to kind of get you to that next milestone, we were really struggling. And so we were able to apply for a PPP loan, which really helped allow us to continue hiring and working and developing our products so that we could ultimately still launch. It's now more than ever so important to have a president and an administration that understands that small business is the backbone of our economy. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was huge. Manufacturing, deregulation, fair trade. These are things that affected real Americans. We have a champion in the Oval Office who has this business background. He actually understands the need for small businesses like my sisters to survive. We aren't the stereotypical conservative. I mean, we're, we come from Hispanic descent and we're millennial women and that's not what the media wants. And so somebody like AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, this far left, these women come out with these very, very destructive political ideologies that are trying to infiltrate millennials and the next generation. I've decided to step up and say, well, we need a counter voice to these women. There has been an assault on capitalism, just generally. And I think it's very scary to imagine a Biden world where the progressive wing ideas are starting to take front and center stage. You know, that will really choke the American economy. There will be over-regulation, over-taxation. It's very hard to innovate through those two things. And ultimately, what's really sad is the thought of, you know, making all of us dependent on the government. And we are not going to allow that. I've seen a lot of moderates, a lot of people now changing over because of everything that's been happening. This is a taste of Biden's America. I mean, this the rioting, the crime, freedom is at stake now. And this is going to be the most important election of our lifetime. We want to preserve the America that our mother came here for. Having a thriving economy, that is keeping America great. And President Trump has delivered on that promise. He's truly fighting for the American people. We're the greatest country in the world, period. On our worst day, we're still the greatest country in the world. And in order to preserve that, it's by putting America first, having a thriving economy, having happiness. Good evening. I'm Senator Tim Scott from the great state of South Carolina. To all of you tuning in and participating in the political process, God bless you. This isn't how I picture tonight, but our country is experiencing something none of us envisioned. From a global pandemic to the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, 2020 has tested our nation in ways we haven't seen for decades. But regardless of the challenges presented to us, every four years, 
Americans come together to vote, to share stories of what makes our nation strong and the lessons we have learned that can strengthen it for further generations. Because while this election is between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, it is not solely about Donald Trump and Joe Biden. It's about the promise of America. It's about you and me, our challenges and heartbreaks, hopes and dreams. It's about how we respond when tackling critical issues like police reform, when Democrats called our work a token effort and walked out of the room during negotiations because they wanted the issue more than they wanted a solution. Do we want a society that breeds success or a culture that cancels everything it even slightly disagrees with? I know where I stand because you see, I am living my mother's American dream. My parents divorced when I was seven years old and we moved in with my grandparents into a two bedroom home with me, my mom and my brother sharing a room and one bed. My mom worked 16 hours a day to keep food on the table and a roof over our heads. She knew that if we could find the opportunity, bigger things would come. I thought I had to use football to succeed in life and my focus on academics faded away. My freshman year, I failed out. I failed four subjects, Spanish, English, world geography, and even civics. Trust me though, after seven years in the Senate, I know I'm not the only one in Congress who failed civics. But even while I was failing the ninth grade, my mother always said to me, Timmy, if you would just shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll be among the stars. She never lost faith in me, even when I lost faith in myself. Because of her encouragement, I went to summer school and caught up. The next year, I met my mentor, John Moniz, a Chick-fil-A operator. John saw something in me that I could not see in myself and started teaching me valuable life lessons. Like having a job would be a good thing, but creating jobs would be even better. That having an income could change my lifestyle, but creating a profit could change my community. He planted the seeds of what would become Opportunity Zones. This initiative that the president and I worked together on is now bringing more than $75 billion of private sector investment into distressed communities. I took those lessons to heart and started putting the pieces of my life back together. I realized a quality education is the closest thing to magic in America. That's why I fight to this day for school choice to make sure every child in every neighborhood has a quality education. I don't care if it's a public, private, charter, virtual, or a homeschool. When a parent has a choice, their kid has a better chance. And the president has fought alongside me on that. Later in life, I started my own small business. That's why I know it is critical for us to have a tax code that encourages growth. We actually saw revenues to the Treasury increase after we lowered taxes in 2017. Rest assured, the Democrats do not want you to know that. After starting my small business and spending some time in local government, I decided to run for Congress in 2010. The district is based in Charleston, South Carolina, where the Civil War started against a son of our legendary Senator, Strom Thurmond. You may be asking yourself, how does a poor black kid from a single parent household run and win in a race crowded with Republicans against a Thurmond? Because of the evolution of the Southern heart. In an overwhelmingly white district, the voters judged me not on the color of my skin, but on the content of my character. We live in a world that only wants you to believe in the bad news, racially, economically, and culturally polarizing news. The truth is our nation's arc always bends back towards fairness. We are not fully where we want to be, but I thank God Almighty, we are not where we used to be. We are always striving to be better. When we stumble, and we will, we pick ourselves back up and try again. 
We don't give in to cancel culture or the radical and factually baseless belief that things are worse today than in the 1860s or the 1960s. We have work to do. I believe in the goodness of America. I promise that all men and all women are created equal. And if you're watching tonight, I'm betting you do too. Over the past four years, we have made tremendous progress towards that promise. President Trump built the most inclusive economy ever. Seven million jobs created pre-COVID-19 and two thirds of them went to women, African Americans, and Hispanics. The first new major effort to tackle poverty in a generation, Opportunity Zones. We put hard earned tax dollars back in people's pockets by cutting their taxes, especially for single parent households like the one I grew up in, cutting single mothers taxes 70% on average. President Trump supported these tax cuts for those single moms and other working families and signed these policies into law and our nation is better off for it. So. I'm going to ask you, the American people, not to simply look at what the candidates say, but to look back at what they've done. This election is about your future, and it is critical to paint a full picture of the records of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Joe Biden said if a black man didn't vote for him, he wasn't truly black. Joe Biden said black people are a monolithic community, it was Joe Biden who said, poor kids can be just as smart as white kids. And while his words are one thing, his actions take it to a whole new level. In 1994, Biden led the charge on a crime bill that put millions of black Americans behind bars. President Trump's criminal justice reform law fixed many of the disparities Biden created and made our system more fair and just for all Americans. Joe Biden also failed our nation's historically black colleges and universities, heaping blame on them as they fought to ensure our young folks had access to higher education. Once again, to clean up Joe Biden's mess, President Trump signed into law historically high funding for HBCUs, as well as a bill to give them permanent funding for the first time ever. And now Joe Biden wants to come for your pocketbooks. Unless, of course, you're a blue state millionaire. I'm serious. That's one of their solutions for the pandemic. They want to take more money from your pocket and give it to Manhattan elites and Hollywood moguls so they get a tax break. Republicans, however, passed President Trump's once in a generation tax reform bill that lowered taxes for single moms, working families, and those in need. So when it comes to what Joe Biden says he'll do, look at his actions, look at his policies, look at what he already did and what he didn't do while he's been in Washington for 47 years. Ladies and gentlemen, people don't always see those failures because they think we're having a policy debate on two sides of an issue. That is not what is happening. Our side is working on policy while Joe Biden's radical Democrats are trying to permanently transform what it means to be an American. Make no mistake, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want a cultural revolution, a fundamentally different America. If we let them, they will turn our country into a socialist utopia. And history has taught us that path only leads to pain and misery, especially for hardworking people hoping to rise. Instead, we must focus on the promise of the American journey. I know that journey well. My grandfather's 99th birthday would have been tomorrow. Growing up, he had to cross the street if a white person was coming. He suffered the indignity 
of being forced out of school as a third grader to pick cotton, and he never learned to read or write. Yet he lived long enough to see his grandson become the first African-American to be elected to both the United States House and the United States Senate in the history of this country. Our family went from cotton to Congress in one lifetime. And that's why I believe the next American century can be better than the last. There are millions of families just like mine all across this nation full of potential seeking to live the American dream. And I'm here tonight to tell you that supporting the Republican ticket gives you the best chance of making that dream a reality. God bless you. And Father, please continue blessing the United States of America. God bless.